Hello everyone and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today with me is our permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, Mr. Barrymore Felicier. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Sidney. Good day, viewers. Great. Mr. Felicier, we have so much to discuss when it comes to the Ministry of Agriculture which is a very dynamic ministry, so much happening, and as I don't think half an hour is sufficient for us to discuss mm -hmm. our achievement. But give a, a brief over, overview to date of the achievements of, or the performance of your ministry. Okay. The Department of Agriculture is made up of several departments, fisheries, forestry, extension advisory services, engineering services, plant and research, vet and livestock, we also have a host of other, of other areas to cover within those departments themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, this year, the emphasis is on food security of the new vision. But with those portfolios assigned or those departments assigned, we have a budget of just over 58 million. 22.3 of that is recurrent expenditure. Capital expenditure is about 35, 35 million. And we have revenue targets of just about 650 thousand dollars which has been lowered because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, revenue is not performing well but to date we've collected in terms of revenue just about 50 percent 49 percent of our revenue. In terms of um, re recurrent expenditure we've, we've dealt with that in terms of 62 percent thereabout and capital projects implementation rate of about 40 percent and 40 percent because we've had delays in implementation caused by the new Public Procurement Act and of course there was a general election where you had to seek new policy direction on what is happening. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell there is an overview of the ministry in terms of departments, revenue, expenditure and capital, capital expenditure. In terms of capital projects we have projects in the area of um, ATB, ATP that is Agricultural Transformation Program where you have special projects unit we have projects in terms of the relocation to Volet capital project. We have the ongoing work at the National Agricultural Diagnostic Facility. We have ongoing work in terms of the CC4 fish program, yes. where we have coral reef enhancement and the like, um, coast fish. We have fisheries management plan, aquaculture management plans, and the like. We have BHF rituals which were issued there in the fisheries. We have upcoming projects next year, but we'll not touch on that now. Mm -hmm. That is in terms, of, in terms of forestry, we have projects under the DVRP, rehabilitation of the nursery. We have the ACT pr program, that is the Wildlife Conservation and Education Center being um, rehabilitated and developed. That is almost complete with the Avery, just to populate it with the animals. Um, we have the rehabilitation of trails at forestry. We have the IWECO project, which is a stabilization project. We have the JCD John Compton Dam, which we just completed. Yes. Yes, uh, that's forestry. We help with Ionola Project, the Jeff Southeast Coast Project, and the forestry. So there are, there are a lot of things happening in terms of um, vet and livestock, animal pound, again, yes. um, the public health aspect to it, the, the treatment of the, the Bontic mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. and the surveillance and monitoring. We have pretty lastly, the usual services going on, employment of officers, um, monitoring surveillance. There's a lot happening. Wow. But so in terms of um, uh, deadlines and achievements of those programs, um, where are some of those programs? Are they at, um, uh, close to, to completion? Okay. Or are, are, they, are they you know, somewhere in the middle area? So a lot of these programs are ongoing projects. So for example, if we were to take the National Agricultural Diagnostic Facility, which is a two-story building, the first floor is comprised of the the animal laboratory mm -hmm. and the plant laboratory. There's room for the 
St. Lucia Bureau standards, and we have a food safety component in there. And then upstairs, the second story, we have floors up there. So in terms of that physical infrastructure, it is almost completed. We are only missing an elevator and a chemical storage room. A chemical storage room because the chemicals, for safety said, is hazardous to store these chemicals within the same facility that houses persons. Mm -hmm. So to, in terms of completion, very near completion. We should see completion before the end of this financial year. Okay. In terms of wallet, we have completed <coughs> The watchman, <coughs> the warehouse, stock, stockman shed, the watchman shed, some um, the upper link road, lower link road, the rabbitry small ruminants, um, the, the swine pens. We've completed all that infrastructure. The gates and fencing, the electricals, the water. So, so to date, what we have to complete this financial year is water reticulation, the sewer system, and start the administrative building this year. In the future, in the years coming, quarantine pens will be required because you cannot house the animals coming in together with general population. Right. And we have some other work to be done in terms of um, the infrastructure, pasture, and the like. Mm -hmm. So that these will be done in coming years. Okay. So we have two or three years left to complete bullet, but by the end of this year, we should be able to move. We have some animals at Sir Arthur once the administrating building is completed, we should be able to move those animals across. Great. Yes. As you on livestock, um, let, let's talk about the MPF. MPF. Mm -hmm. So the, the meat processing facility, we, since we moved across to, to Sir Arthur, the plan was to relocate and, and move the processing facility to Lapel in Denry. The options are now on the table to stay and Re-equip the facility at the MPF. Mm -hmm. So we are now at, at Bosejo. Sorry, mm -hmm. we are now seeking options and costings. What what it would cost by way of estimates to now re-equip that facility to a fully functioning facility. So that is the and the other option is of course a fully fledged facility at Lapel, which is around 16, 16 million dollars. Okay. So to weigh the options, stay go. We will be providing the executive with the costings and options to make a final decision as to whether or not we remain or we go. Wow. Yes. Okay, so uh, MPF to stay at Bosiju, which is, I think, is a good thing yeah. because in terms of cost. Um, the equipment, do you think the equipment up to date is, is, is still okay. so that is, good that working is, condition? That is part of the costing that we, we need to get the, the persons who set up in the UK to come down, have a look at the existing equipment tell us what is in f good functioning condition, mm -hmm. what it would cost to repair and bring this facility to back to the, the state of prominence it was once in. Okay, great, great. Yes. Stray animals, but th this is a, th I've just talking it briefly because I, I, I don't think we should shy away from it because we started some work on, on this and um, we did ads, we have meetings with the livestock um, owners, but apparently it's, it's coming back, you know, um, it's, it, it's, it's really causing, causing a problem now. Where are we at? Yes, yeah, so we have done some work in terms of strengthening our, our position in terms of providing an animal pound. So it was actually published that the locations of the animal pounds in Bexo, we have assigned pound keepers and we have done the like. We have worked with some of the farmers in terms of identifying and tagging animals mm -hmm. to ensure that the animal, the owners and animals uh, in a registry, mm -hmm. so we know who they are and who the animals belong to. And we've done some sensitization and education with the farmers as well. But there is a persistent problem, especially in the shock area, yes. um, with one particular farmer where the animals are always on the highway. Mm -hmm. um, we have sent documentation to the individual and um, pursued some exercises of warning the individual of the dangers of allowing those animals to treat. So in the near future, I can see, Mr. Sidney, that some, some action will have to be taken to, to safeguard the public. Safety, definitely, definitely, safety is definitely. paramount, and we have, to, we have to ensure that the, the, the public, especially the, the motoring public, mm -hmm. they're not in mm -hmm. any serious harm. Mm -hmm. um, the animals as well. Yes, um, it's, unfair they, they, it's, it's unfair to them. Mm -hmm. When you hit an animal, sometimes the animal suffers. Yeah, 
It's so Inhuman again, uh, I mean, in terms of cruelty to animals, animals yes, yes yeah. it's, so that's a different problem. And mm -hmm. in Viewford as well, we've we've noted the issue with with Mr. Shalry, yeah. where the street animals have been have been visiting his his garden and yes, destroying yes. and destroying Sad. his his produce, which mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. seems to be a recurring a recurring event. Mm -hmm. So yes, we've noted and taken account of those things. Okay, there are a number of other projects. Um, I don't know if you care to mention the the cocoa. Coco, mm -hmm. yes. So we've, we've recently learned from the, the trade mission to the UK that the contracts with bananas for 2022 is at risk. Coco appears to be or is one of the products that can ease that transition to another valuable product. As it stands in St. Lucia, there's a, there's a shortage of cocoa beans. Yes. The demand for cocoa on the market keeps going up and the price keeps going up. We cannot supply enough cocoa for our internal needs and for the export market. So cocoa is a viable product, especially when you add value to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at wet and dry beans, you may just be breaking even. But once you look like at value added, like the powder, the cocoa sticks, and the chocolate, then you see some real super profits coming in. There is, there is the, this um, um, structure at Angers, um, that is the, the cocoa fermentry. The, oh yes. What, what institution is that? We have had that, that facility disused for a number of years. Um, persons expressed interest, but they have not taken up the use of the facility. We recently, within the last two months, published an expression of interest for persons interested, and we got a number of persons who have um, expressed an interest, a genuine interest, mm -hmm. in running that cocoa fermentry. So the next step for us is to evaluate those expressions and sit with the, the ranking, the priority bidder, and have discussions, negotiations, and enter into some agreement for the use of that facility. Okay. But on that same program, um, is there some dialogue with Hotel Chocolat? Because they are doing quite a lot of cocoa. I know they are, they, there is some arrangement with farmers where they give farmers plants and the farmers would sell to them and of course they export to, um, to the UK. Um, how is the ministry in terms of partnership? Yes, so the, the ministry is, in terms of partnership, we, we work with all major stakeholders. But the work right now in terms of Hotel Chocolat is discussions with Coco stakeholders. So you'd find that um, Hotel Chocolat, the rest, um, discussions are going on in, in, the, in the industry to further the industry. What we have done in terms of real steps is with other persons like FAO, right. in terms of value chain. What we've done, Compete Caribbean, in terms of training, the Coco Research Center, in terms of the, the flavors of Coco, analysis of Coco, what's affecting Coco. And through this, this year's budget, we want to, or the next year's budget, I should say, we want to embark on the cocoa sector enhancement project. Mm -hmm. We've made a submission for some money so that we can rehabilitate some of those, those um, cocoa fields, expand um, certain acreages, and help the farmers in terms of the pest and disease control, the rodent mm -hmm. and the, the, the black pod. Black pod uh, yes, 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 yes. So, so that is on the way. Um, to complement that as well, we have put in a request for mechanization, some tillers to help and some yeah. tractors to help in terms of land preparation. So we are looking at cocoa and other products um, in a big way. Great. Apiculture. I, real, I realize this, this, is, this industry is growing rapidly, um, especially with, with COVID has done, yes, some negatives, but it's done some positives, you know. It, 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 people became more innovative and, you know, so now there are quite a few persons who have gone into if, uh, the production of honey. Uh, what, what, what is the ministry doing in that regard? We have, um, within the Vet and Livestock Division, we have uh, a, small, a small unit of one person plus some persons that have been trained to, mm -hmm. to help persons in, in um, becoming better in terms of, of beekeeping mm -hmm. and the, the agricultural practices associated with that. We've also given some support to cooperative um, in terms of helping them with their management because we have at Lakai a facility to process honey that has not been used as well. Hold that point because 
I want to continue, but we are due for a break. Okay. You're watching Agriculture in the Move. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Honey is coming up. When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything on board. Still on board? Yeah, port car with that, boy. Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, navigational equipment, safety gear and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order, you are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimated time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468-4143. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. With me, our permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Barry Morfidis here. And of course, we're discussing lots of programs and projects and achievements in that ministry. Mr. Piers, we're talking about uh, the apiculture and, of course, uh, honey production, which is, is, is growing. Um, lots of persons are wanting to get into it now. Um, you spoke about uh, a facility in Lakai. Yes, we, we do have a facility in Lakai that is just waiting to be used to process honey so that it can facilitate trade, especially to the e export market. You know we have our, our SPS requirements yes. to trade, mm -hmm. but as it stands now, honey, honey is in high demand locally. Mm -hmm. So on the domestic market, you have a high demand for honey. So we need to fulfill that demand as well as um, there's export potential for honey. We have recently partnered and Jeff, Jeff has been doing a lot of work in, it, in terms of apiculture and on the 9th and 10th of December we have the first ever honey show where we will be featuring honey products and honey related products. Uh, there will be a judging categories, judging, prizes, announcements. So on the 9th and 10th of December uh, at Constitution Park everyone should come down and see what St. Lucia has to offer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us in St. Lucia, in terms of the, the agro-processing products, we are not aware that St. Lucia is so skilled yes. and we are so blessed in terms of the variety and quality of products that we can produce. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity, it's an exhibition, opportunity for us to come see and support. Definitely. I know the, the minister has articulated quite a lot recently on the banana sector. Yes. I still think within that, you know, forum that we're in today, we should not leave it out. We should at least, you know, say something about it. Um, such an important industry. I start to see the way, where we are now with it, you know, with just a small window of opportunity. And I, I think it's, I, I'm saying it's our last chance for marketing. Bananas, regional bananas, we still have a market for regional bananas. We do export to banana, um, bananas to Barbados, to... Trinidad and these places. Not, well, not specifically Trinidad because of the currency issue, but we want to restart that. But to Antigua, St. Kitts and the like, mm -hmm. we are exporting, but we'd like to increase the export to other countries. Oh, yeah. In terms of the UK market, again, we have experienced over the last two years the issues with Black Sigatoga as a rise in that, preventing us from exporting, the prolonged drought, mm -hmm. the issues with maximum residual limits, yes. which is a trade barrier to the UK where the bananas had to be dumped because we did not comply with those trade impositions and restrictions on the chemical use of the fungicide used to treat crown rot. So all of that. Um, and then we had ELSA. Yes. Again, we fall that damage. So consistently over the last two years, we've not been able to provide the quantity and quality of bananas required on the UK market. Mm -hmm. And um, in the UK, it was made clear that they require a commitment by St. Lucian growers in terms of providing the quality of bananas and um, not overgrade, not overgrade bananas, 
but quality bananas uh, that is consist that they they receiving from places like Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. and the Latin American countries. So that is what we need to do to export on a consistent level because Saint Lucian bananas receives we receive a high premium, the fair trade price exactly. for bananas. Exactly. So once we can export under the fair trade banana brand, the banana is is the price is very good for the farmer. But yes, I don't something I don't understand. We're dealing with mature people, mature farmers. How much more can we tell them that quality is important for the survival of the industry? What more can we do? I, I know that there has been, through the Banana Productivity Improvement Project, there's been extensive handholding. There's been training. We have provided um, inputs in terms of oil, fertilizer, irrigation, pack houses, toilets. We've, we've done all that under that program, um, helping farmers become global gap certified. Yeah. All of that has happened. So uh, the onus really now lies on the farmer to ensure that the, the quality of the product they produce, because they are in fact hurting themselves of course. and the entire industry. Having said so, we are also seeking um, with the, the restructuring or looking at the industry to strengthen the inspection system. Mm -hmm. So the banana inspectorate in some way has to be strengthened if we are to ensure that bananas continue to be supplied to the UK. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I don't know why farmers keep doing this. For years, I remember when I joined the ministry as an extension officer, there was a demand for um, ginger, mm -hmm. all right? And you know, when it came to for selection, you know, it was not that stringent. You know, just, you just back the ginger and you send it across, right? The demand was there, the price was good, right? Instead of, you know, the farmers increasing the acreage for production, they went and, 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 and harvest what we call the jejum doule, mm -hmm. you know, and if they, they put three quarters of this in the bag and a quarter of the ginger, they lost that market, Yes. right? right. The dashing is another one, yes. you know, they, they, they put malenga in the thing, you know? I mean, at this stage, are we supposed to be, you know, Telling the farmers not to do this, man, that's ridiculous. I mean, you remember the, the copper industry, you know, they're putting stones in the yes. thing, you know, um, you know, smashing the cogs on the wheels. Or, I mean, come on, wh wh where will it stop? You know? so, so now we have bananas and, and we need to, to put our best foot forward. Yeah. But the other area we're seeing some declines in terms of quality and we have to be careful is CMOS. Yes. yes, so the, the yes. export market, we have to ensure that we, we don't give under grid CMOS or low quality CMOS. So we have to ensure that the markets that we have, the high value markets, we protect them. And that the, at, the, at the end of the supply chain, we give the customer good quality. Yeah, but, but apparently the quality of CMOS, which is again another commodity that mm. um, is like, it's, like, it's like a gold rush, eh? because of COVID, people have found time, you know, to go. Um, but then if it's done, the marketing is done properly, the selection is done properly, it can work. Yes. But apparently you have a lot of backdoor. How can it, how, how, how it, it leaves the St. Lucia, you know, you have to get your phyto to get it out there. But apparently, you know, it gets over there without that. And that's where the quality issue comes in. But what the phyto does, the phyto says to you that this product is, is free of, of pest or, or disease. It does not necessarily the like, like the banana. Yes, the yes. banana, you see, it, it, it's free from um, the pink mealybug. Right. But it does, not, it does not deal with the overgreed issue right, that right, you would have. Correct, correct. So yes. the phyto does not necessarily deal with that. You need to actually look at the quality of CMOS or quality of banana being exported. Right, yes. And then again, you need to perhaps have a filtering agency to deal with that. Yes, that's the other thing. Another yeah. commodity that I think we have, we have done a lot of work with it. FAO has given us a lot, a lot of assistance in that regard. That's the cassava. Cassava. Um, where we are now? In terms of cassava, we've, we've performed that value chain analysis with FAO. But there is an ongoing consultancy with the OECS to, to, look, at, to look at that as well, to look at um, added value to cassava and um, taking it to, a, to another level, building on what the FAO consultancy has done mm -hmm. and adding more value to cassava, seeing what else can be done with cassava. But we've done so much with cassava in terms of the studies at Cardi, the varieties. The varieties, yes. We've done in-house the waxing of cassava 
to ensure that the shelf life goes beyond the normal three or four days, mm -hmm. to expand it to the, that 13, 12, 13 days. Including vac vacuum packing. Including vacuum packing. Yes, yes. We've done that. that we've, we've had um, workshops on the, the processing of cassava, the cultivation of cassava. So we've done a lot of work. And remember, you, you highlighted the promotion of the cassava mash. Yes. Even, sir. even that was done. That was done. So a lot of work has gone into cassava. And now we have to take, allow the persons in the industry to build on that work. And again, the issue with things like cassava mash is the inconsistency with supply. Yeah. So when the suppliers in the bakeries are looking for cassava mash and you start to supply them, then the, 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 the supply runs out. Yeah, because I, imagine you, you had FEO came down, I think they gave uh, 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 a piece of equipment, all right, uh, for the use in the cassava production. Um, they brought down a, a, a master baker, yes. all right, to work with the bakers down here. So much so, you had um, Bros Bakery in, in VA4 um, supplying bread, cassava bread. Um, you also have Money's Bakery. You know, and it was going well, but right now you cannot find that. People, yeah. were, people were buying that. It was in demand. So what, what can we do now to ensure the, the production of cassava? We have to start with the production system again, ensure that, that there's enough cassava under cultivation for a consistent supply. So we now have to go back to our extension and go back to our marketing unit to ensure that all along the chain we have what is required, the quantities required on a consistent level. So the planting material, we have to start with the planting material from propagation, good planting material, the soils available for it, the processing of it in terms of the food safety and food health, mm -hmm. um, market access, and the like. And of course, affordable inputs, which is you have to look at, at cultivation or production along the entire value chain for any crop, and cassava is no different. Yeah, but the point is, I mean, where do we go? I mean, is it part and parcel of the annual work program for extension? That's an, yes, that's a, that, that, that is that is that is the the only crop currently that is not under the purview of the extension department is bananas. Okay. Only bananas, which which, which there's a separate unit for banana extension. I understand. Yeah. So all other crops, your extension officer, and we have seven seven extension region offices supposed to assist with all the technical aspects of cultivation and the treatment of any crop, including cassava. But if you need, if you need good planting material, then your extension officer again, supposed to refer you to the propagation de department or to another person who has good planting material if propagation does not have it. Oh, but then it, there's a conversation need to be had eh, with, with uh, extension and the whole relationship between you know the propagation unit because something's not happening there i mean we have to be we have to be no. we cannot sugarcoat it yeah. so we, we have to really look at it and see but, but again um let me say to the to the listening public and the farmers that we do have on our website we do have tech packs which assist you in the production of various items so there are about 50 50 tech packs on the website okay to assist you with production and the treatment of pests and disease final words from you sir well, agriculture is doing a lot. Um, it's already that oh, time. Yes. We, we, are, we are doing a lot. We have a lot. We just ended our media review in terms of seeing where we are at. Um, after six months, the government has allocated resources to us, financial, human, um, given us infrastructure, and we need to account for that. But we are being pulled in all sorts of directions. You have external agencies. They want to agenda this. You want that. We need to keep focus as a ministry. And we are keeping focus. So our focus is on the enhancement of food, food production systems, food safety. We're looking at the whole idea of traceability. And we want to ensure that we optimize the use of the resources that are allocated to us. Because the only way we are going to recover, um, economically and otherwise, is to ensure that we work well, we perform well, and we use the resources we have wisely. Definitely. Thank you very much, Mr. P.S., and of course, our, uh, for our food security to be safe. Yes. Thank you again. You've been watching Agriculture in the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. And also remember, agriculture is our business, and eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye, and see you again. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move. 
Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on